Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left-hand corner, we have Ash Dreamer starting as the Purple Protoss. Bottom left-hand corner, we have Playoff Lenny starting as the Brown Zerg, and this is going to be a BSL highlight just before Season 13 starts. Or, ooh, already a probe going a long way around. Of Dreamer, I actually just recently found out that Dreamer is also going to be doing the official Russian casts for BSL Season 13. So a fellow caster and player. Dreamer, of course, getting to just on the verge of championships in Hasu League. Two seasons in a row, and I really want to see him actually... T I'm kind of rooting for him to take a Hasu League championship. And now I have even more reason to do so, knowing that he is also a fellow caster. Uh, if you guys, in the interim, this kind of goes out... Maybe I should upload this one immediately uh, before Season 13 gets officially underway. I think I'm going to have Chobo uh, League or Hasu League replays as of next week, because I believe it starts this weekend, but I might not at the same time. And this kind of also goes out to the Twitch audience as well. <clears throat> which is if you have a replay that you would like me to do that you have not um that you've not seen me do before and it's highlighting someone just if you have a brood war replay let me know right now brood war brood war replays are down i don't have anything official i'm doing i'm debating like just doing i don't know putting some money and having a show match uh just to have some filler content in between but right now i'm waiting for chobo league and hasu league to get underway so i can start casting that again but uh, and I'm fresh out of replays. I had NA team battles that were in between. I had these player highlights, and right the second got nothing. Really, what I want to do is see if I can arrange some games between various European players, specifically because I've I feel like I've covered a lot of the North American guys, but I really have a gap when it comes to some of the European people and their participation, both in uh, in in all ranges of the league. And they're fantastic players. It looks like Dewalt, Dewalt. <laughs> My brain's on DeWalt because I've got a DeWalt replay behind here. Dreamer, scouting uh, DeWalt was on my brain because I'm like, I really want to highlight DeWalt in particular because I feel like he's not just the best foreign player right now, but uh, it, he's a guy who, I don't know, I hope he tries out for ASL. Lenny, scouting in the upper right-hand corner. I believe this was a second probe actually being moved out because Dreamer wants to get that scouting information. It looks like there was a 12th hatch. This is a spawning pool, all larva being expended. So it doesn't, I, I assume if there are going to be zerglings produced it is going to be in much smaller numbers we have a forge that was placed first nexus preventatively on that front door part of the reason dreamer wanted that scout and we'll see if yeah larva get saved and how many get placed off the bat because i think dreamer actually might even be able to sneak going a gateway after this rather than it looks like he is going to opt for a gateway that drone scout is able to sneak in sees that nexus and it looks like it's just going to go ahead and return home from here this is on good night, by the way. I forgot to mention that, that this was the map. And let's see how many Zerglings get produced. It looks like we're just going to see the two. Just the pair. However, what this might provoke, let's see if the... Yeah, so the probe scout moves up, sees the three eggs hatching, and let's see if it delays and waits to put down a cannon. Looks like there is a preventatory cannon regardless. But I'm wondering if that cannon actually could have waited uh, with this, with just the two Zerglings. It looks like this probe missed a bit of harassment. Looks like it's severely damaged. Natural expansion up running. Third hatch already being planted at the inside mineral only for Lenny. <clears throat> and Dreamer continuing to push economy. He's got that, that assimilator up, is doing that transfer of probes. So everything kind of standard PVZ. We'll have to see whether, and a skip of Zergling speed, I believe. Well, we'll see momentarily once the gas is in place. I think Zergling speed might get skipped. Yeah, and we're going straight to lair. Straight to lair, feeling good with the commentary predictors at this stage. A single Zergling is going to move out to the front, so we'll see what Dreamer's up to. He's got that first sellet in production. Natural expansion, pretty well saturated. Cybernetics core on the way, but if he can get that probe, this is the thing with like the fewer Zerglings, is if you cannot kill that probe scout, and that probe is able to go back up into the main and get the scouting information, specifically see lair or see uh, three hatchery, things like that, I feel like it gives Protoss a big advantage because oftentimes what they can do is they know whether they need to produce this uh, Corsair, put down cannons, skip Stargate, things like that. Some drones trying to blockade the ramp. They are able to kill that probe. So a little bit of delayed mining time, but I believe that's worth it. This is going to force, it looks like a Stargate already in production to get that additional scouting information. But regardless, this is going to be, I believe, three hatch muta for Lenny. It is possible we're going to see that fold back to the four hatch play, which has been very popular lately. A Zealot Engage that initial Zergling. You can see the one death on its count. It's making its way down. So, and Lenny producing a handful of Zerglings to go ahead and counter this. It looks like he is going to get a decent surround before that Zealot is able... Well, actually, the Zealot going to be able to march into the main. 
and it's going to get eyes on the Spire, first of all, and forced a lot of link production as well. Zirkling Speed finally going up. Dreamer nicely pocketing this Zealot behind there. It's still engaging two at a time, but rather than getting surrounded, it lets it get a bit of additional damage done. Fourth Hatchery, so it looks like Lenny, upon getting scouted, is going to move back to Fourth Hatchery. A Zealot has managed to sneak into that third base, where he has one Zergling kills, trying to work on drones as well. It's going to get wiped out. Some nice defense from Lenny overall, and Overlord's going to sneak in. I don't know that this Overlord... Oh, interesting. So Dreamer, upon seeing that fourth hatchery, and upon seeing kind of the saturation at that third, has opted, and with that Spire being built, he's opted to go Citadel of Adun first, and then... Corsair to follow up. He is going to build a significant amount of Corsairs, I believe, because we have this Weapons 1 whirling right here. But suggest he wa really wants to push into air control. This Overlord is going to sacrifice it li its life because there's that Corsair that's going to pop up right on top of it. That should put Lenny in the red briefly. Lenny's grabbing that second gas. He's actually grabbing a fifth hatchery. So it looks like he's, yeah, he has Lair. He has that Spire, but he's going to fold back potentially to five hatch Hydralisk and just use those initial Corsair or initial Scourge in production to keep the Corsair back at least occupied until they get more sufficient numbers. There are preventative, the preventative, preventative, preventatory? I'm not sure why I can't say that today. There are, I'll just say preventative. You've got a preventative cannon in the natural expansion. You've got one um, at the main as well, although I'm selecting the wrong bases while I'm doing that. Weapons one up. We did have those two zealots that were expended at the front. Uh, no harassment, so that weapons one sh should finish the scourge. Put a little bit of ja on it. The Scourge are moving forward. They want to go ahead and see if they can pick off a Corsair. The Corsair hugging those cannons. Three in production. It looks like, yeah, this is going to be an air control play from Dreamer. Nice Sim City on the front. Looks like, yeah, you have that missile attack being upgraded. So Lenny folding back into five hatch Hydralisk. Although we don't see a Hydralisk den anywhere. There's the Hydralisk den at the inside expansion. Actually grabbing six hatcheries. The Scourge scooting from behind. One of them taken out, it looks like, on that above, on that upper cannon. Here's the thing. I think Lenny, looking at all this, might be thinking, this is a bit of an exposed area. Maybe with some Mutalisks I can sneak back into this. And I don't know that he's got a good look at the Corsair count, but he's continuing to produce Hydralisks in the mid-game. He's also getting that Phenomenized Carapace. So things playing. This is almost, I feel like this is folding into what is becoming the standard meta these days. This is, this, in my opinion, is like the cutting edge meta in uh, PVZ, it, depending on, with all the scouting information, things happening, if it's stabilizing somewhere around here. Five Corsair moving out with that weapons one. If they get decent position, they can take out uh, the Scourge. There is a second gas that was placed a while ago, and it looks like a Zergling camping near that 12 o'clock. We'll see if they one Scourge lands, the second does not, but there, and let's see if there this Scourge gets picked off as well, does get picked off. So these Corsair with level 1 weapons, are going to be a significant threat to these overlords. Dreamer dashing in. That's plenty of Hydralisks to deal with the Zealots underneath, but the Zealots are distracting the Hydralisks while two overlords were already picked off. Lenny has plenty of overlords to filter in between, to, to have enough supply in between, but that is a nice 200 mineral take and a bit of a distraction. This is definitely going to keep Lenny more on the defensive. Corsair is continuing to press forward while those Hydralisks are out of position to see if they can find additional units. Let's see if the these Corsair look like... Uh, nice little dance there from Dreamer to dodge. How did that those Scourge not land, to be honest? No additional Corsair being produced. Looks like we do have additional Gateway. There is a Dark Templar sitting on the front. I think that's mostly preventative, uh, a preventative Dark Templar, just to make sure that there's no front door contain. I actually love this play. Moving back towards home base. I like this Dark Templar out in the front because it can really disrupt, especially when you have these Corsair. I really like Dreamer's play in this, actually. And I feel like, yeah, this is, I, I would say, uh, if you're a Protoss player out there and you're wondering about modern PvZ, this is very modern to me. And I think this is how everything's going to move in the future, is having that preventative Dark Templar, having the Corsair to go ahead and push that Overlord off the front with the two bases. Yeah, you can see there. Phenomenized Carapace is there, but keep in mind that Overlord can get taken down really quickly. Quickly, and I feel like the Dark Templar is just a more solid answer to these Hydralisks on the front. Um, insufficient numbers if you have enough cannons. But looks like a, there are three cannons on the front. There's a robotics facility, and that also allows you to save. Ooh, High Templar actually moving out, wanting to drop a size storm on some of these Hydralisks. Looks like they are going to be able to catch some. Honestly, I feel like that's a little bit overextended. Three, three quick kills. Is it going to get picked off? It looks like it is taking damage. 
is going to be able to get back into the safety fold here. The Corsair is following those overlords and might be able to swing in and take them out. You can just see where this, this is a very punishing style, if you like, for the Zerg in the mid game. That does put Lenny in the red. So Lenny going to go ahead and sit back. He's grabbing his six o'clock base, that hatchery about halfway finished. He's That's going to put him at seven hatcheries overall. So he's got a lot of production. Queen's Nest also being planted down. So he wants to make his way towards Hive. Dreamer at this stage about, what, what is that? 15, 14 supply ahead. Does have level one weapons, level two weapons on the way. And is starting to build that army. As soon as he has, looks like he's got a shuttle. So he wants to go for a potential drop as well. For Dreamer on his side of the map, he's got to start thinking about getting that observatory, getting the observers out in the field, having a sufficient attack force where he feels comfortable with his map control. We can sneak out and go ahead and grab an additional base. So two High Templar and a Zealot. You can see the probe with the battle probe with its minerals. This is kind of the stalwart forward exp expeditionary force. Ooh, a Dark Templar. And that shuttle as well. A lot of Hydralisks, however, out in the front. And they do have level one weapons. So they can very and look for... It's going to be a question of protection. The Zealot moving up. Protection of those High Templar. It's almost like all these units are bodyguards. And actually with these Corsair, they might uh, get past the Scourge and be, just be able to shove a drop in the backfield. The one thing for Dreamer is, is does he have enough Psy Storm to deal with all of these Hydralisks? The Hydralisks is diving into that 12 o'clock location. The Overlords pushing into that natural expansion while this is happening. And there's that shuttle behind it. There's only, it looks like, a handful of Hydralisks dealing with this otherwise. A bit of a distraction there. Drop... Storm drop, it looks like seven kills. So one, a couple Corsair getting picked off, but a lot of Overlords getting picked off as well. Dark Templar in the mix as well. And another Psy Storm at the main. So it looks like while this 12 o'clock base is getting taken out, so there was a cancel by Dreamer. He was able to inflict a lot of crippling damage. Dropping Lenny to 35 probes. Let's see if he can get yet another drop. He's going to pocket the shuttle in between all of these bases, and there's another opportunity if he can get out towards that mineral only. I'll try to keep an eye on it. However, for Dreamer, he still hasn't established his third. That third's very delayed, and he's essentially up against four base Zerg, which, if that, if he just lets Lenny continue with this, it looks like he's already redroned. Hydralis repositioning, now that those Corsairs are down. Having a Bit of trouble being cohesive, so and a bit of an empty storm as well. It's kind of funny where like going up against pro you need the Zerg army to be cohesive so you can properly size storm it. A zealot eating its own storm. And you can see the hydro is just regrouping, repositioning, and now Dream moving out with a sizable army. That should be enough to be both a threat and to allow some additional control to go ahead and take that third base. He needs to shove in and take out that hydralisk. He's actually hunting, so ooh, of course both Corsairs being picked off. Dangerous territory. Dreamer continuing to push this. He does another good size storm. It is going to come down to good, solid size storms. Looks like he's got about three in the bank. These hydralisks getting caught as they're kind of dancing in and out of position. Ooh, observer getting accidentally size stormed in the midst of this. But I don't see any lurkers on the field as well. It looks like Lenny is happy to just kind of, he's just kind of dancing these hydralisks back. He needs to be careful that he doesn't lose all of these hydralisks because if he does. Dreamer might be able to run over one of these bases. The Dragoon's repositioning. Is there any Psy Storm left? Does not look like it. And the Hydra is going to go ahead and just expend their lives, try to back off to the upper right to buy some time to go ahead and get some defenses at these exterior bases. Level 2 weapons is online, but level 2 weapons and level 1 armor, the upgrade advantage is on Dreamer's side of the field. And this is oftentimes where we see Zerg lose the game, is they don't have that double evolution chamber. They don't keep pace with the Protoss and their ability to, to keep the upgrades. It looks like Dreamer now finally getting that third base at his mineral only. However, it's not over yet. Lenny, you can just see, yeah, dropping all sorts of sunken colonies here at the 6 o'clock base, getting that additional gas there. He does have Hive Tech. Critically, he needs Swarm. He needs uh, Plague. He needs those components to kind of negate that upgrade advantage if he can. To just stay alive and kind of press things from there. He does have, and critically, there's a big lack of lurkers out in the field. I don't see an observer, however, with this army. So if Dreamer is going to push through this, he needs to do it with Psy Storm alone. And right now he's expending a lot of those Psy Storm on Hydralisks. That Psy Storm did not look like it hit that lurker. 
So keep in mind, without that observer, this lurker will eventually clean up the rest of this army. Dreamer pressing into that natural expansion. Dragoons kind of splitting both directions, but just eating a lot of splash damage. And these Dragoons just lining up for that lurker. It's like an a overactive mind that's just continuing plusing things. So it looks like Dreamer is going to end up losing the entirety of his army. And again, this is a hero lurker. Six kills currently, and who knows how much damage. An incredible amount of damage that was inflicted out of this. And Dreamer, upon losing this army, needs to worry about his ability to go ahead and hold this mineral only. He does have cannons warping in. Still has the shuttle nearby with some Psy Storm ready. And in the background, we have a handful of gateways kind of spread out all over the place, to be honest. Mineral, sorry, the main looking a bit thin. Natural expansion is also looking a bit beleaguered. That Hydralisk was cleared out of that 12 o'clock location. Dreamer does need to think about starting to take it. We have a probe transfer to the mineral only. But currently, Lenny getting his double, yeah, getting additional evolution chambers, realizing the upgrade issue. I'm still looking for, he, he has hive tech. I'm looking for uh, some sort of hive tech third tier unit. So maybe he's just wanted the hive and he just wants to stick to Hydralisk pure. But I don't know. I feel like not having a Defiler Mound at least and not having the adrenal upgrades with the Zerglings, things like that. Um, Missed opportunity. I don't know. Some lurkers have been established. This is really nice positioning where as units are approaching that high ground, they have you know, misfire advantage and have to eat a bunch of spines. Level 3 weapons, level 2 armor, level 1 shields on the way for Dreamer. So decent upgrade advantage for him. A slew of upgrades now started for Lenny. It looks like he is getting that adrenal upgrades now. Um, and so it looks like Lenny's plan from this stage is like, okay, I've got a superior bases. I'm just going to sit back, macro up, try to get 200-200, and then get my upgrades from there. One Observer picked off. Second Observer just barely escapes. And with that Observer severely damaged, and all of these units greeting Dreamer, Dreamer going to go ahead and back off, trying to reposition his High Templar towards the front of this army. Did that Observer get picked off? Well, I, or did it just completely escape? It looks like Dreamer, realizing he's not going to get a lot accomplished there, going to go ahead and back off. I like the play. Okay, not anything accomplishing there. Let's just back off. He's going to grab that 9 o'clock base and see if he can get a steal there. He does have the Dragoons in the threat. Look, and I think he realizes Lenny's playing more defensively at this stage. Lenny without... And I, did, I think I missed a Storm Drop in the midst of that. So he went in. I'm going to do an uncharacteristic thing. Wrong one. And we're going to go... Uh, not that one. Pause. We're going to go back. Just a minute. In the middle of this map because we want to catch that storm drop so storm drop moving in drop so while all of that attack was happening on the front an okay size storm 13 kills on it actually an amazing size storm i didn't realize it was that many kills but lenny's still sitting at 45 probes overall that shuttle looks like it's going to escape briefly maybe some scourge will be into it so while i'm looking at the attack so basically i fell for it too i fell for it too nice play there the scourge moving up Front door attack that was not fully dedicated from Dreamer. He just wanted to buy some uh, distractionary. It's kind of that tactic where it's like a, I used to do ninja strikes, which basically it's like, ah, surprise, like stab, you know, mole trap uh, with mole trap. Mole trap had more epic ones than me, but a couple occasionally what I do is just like leave out what was called the distractionary object, like leave out a, a can that's just sitting there in a weird spot. So someone's looking at it. So it's like, what's that can doing there? And then you ninja strike. So that was the, the tactic right there. Have that army in front to distract and then engage with a storm drop behind. Nice play from Dreamer. Zerglings pouring in. It looks like the cannons are not in position for this 9 o'clock base. The Zealots and Dragoons pressing up to try to defend this. Those Zerglings, keep in mind, are adrenal upgraded. So they can tear. So even in small numbers, they can do immense amount of damage very, very rapidly. This also increases pressure on Dreamer to get... Uh, more zealots in his production force because you need them to deal with the... And here's the thing is, is once they're adrenal upgraded and once they have sufficient carapace upgrades, no carapace upgrade just yet, um, they do trade pretty well with zealots. So plague, uh, especially if those zealots are plagued or things like that, although again, we don't... Uh, look, we do have a defiler mound down at this stage. It looks like um, the upgrade's still being... Still waiting for those upgrades. It looks like Lenny going to try to take that bottom right hand base, but point being Archons start being become uh, start becoming, wow, I can't talk all of a sudden, becoming more important at this stage of the match. 12 o'clock location has been established. 9 o'clock base, 
Looks like the cannons are warping in. There's also a High Templar there. You can see Dreamer playing very defensively around that location. I like that Lenny is at least exploring. Looks like he's just got these Zerglings on patrol. He has a drone already planted at that 3 o'clock location. So he realizes this is going to turn into maybe a potentially longer term map. The Zealot wandering through wants to see... Wow, just getting by all of these Zerglings. Come on, Zerglings. You're even speed upgraded. Just being a little bit of derps. It's like the march. He wants to check that upright hand base and see what's going on there. He's going to get wiped out. It's almost like walking into a wall right there. Another zealot checking out that bottom right hand corner. It's finding a drone right there, so at least it's going to interrupt another hatchery from being planted. But should be able to find this hatchery in the bottom right. I don't think that Dreamer can do anything about it, though, because, well, potentially, if he goes for a very risky attack with this army to the bottom right, that would leave the rest of his bases exposed. Single zealot. Engaging right there, the Zerglings engaging. It looks like he is going to go for it. There is a counterattack nearby. With a, oh, and it, there's going to be swarm with this as well. So basically, Dreamer needs to have a an amazing Psy Storm. And actually, if he walks down Psy Storms just now, before that Defiler is able to drop. So there's one Psy Storm. There's the second. This is what I love to see out of Zerg opponents. Actually, is this exact thing. Adrenal upgraded Zerglings and just a little bit of swarm. It looks like that base is going to fall. However, Dreamer counterattacking. Nidus Canal's up. He is going to be able to pick that Nidus Canal off. It looks like another base being taken out, but this base certainly going to fall. So a base for a base, and unfortunately, I think this works against Dreamer. It looks like a bunch of Lurkers and Zerglings now also pouring in. Nice storm, catching some bunched up Lurkers right there. But the cannon's not long for life, and this is what I was concerned about with Dreamer, is while he was attacking that bottom right, leaving the rest of his bases exposed, Lenny doing a nice job counterattacking into the rest of this. Some Archons now pushing up. The long-touted Archons. A wall of flames to try to clear what's left, but there's a bunch of Lurkers and a bunch of Hydralisks, so unfortunately they're not engaging just Zerglings in this composition. Dreamer regrouping. Maybe wants to take a shot at the 6 o'clock, but he's already lost two bases compared to one. One base that wasn't even mining. A lot of his army as well. Some Dark Templar going to regroup with this fray, and this is... I love this. I like this play from Lenny. I hope Lenny actually, I'm not sure Lenny's alt, but I hope he plays in BSL Season 13 as well. Looks like this army is going to get wiped out, kind of cleared out so that Dreamer can go ahead and reestablish it. I'm looking for Lenny now. I like that there's a Dark Templar patrolling bottom right. There's another Zealot at the 3 o'clock location. Lenny might want to go ahead and grab additional bases. He is lost a lot of his army. Is this a drop incoming? Looks like we do see a drop. Overlords making their way across the corner of the base. I think Dreamer has spotted it, though. And he now it's a race to get back to the main. The Observer sees those Zealots, or sorry, sees those Overlords and Zerglings incoming. The unit's trying to flood back to the main. I love Lenny's play here. The Zerglings dropping, and they can just tear through infrastructure very, very rapidly. There are Dark Templar, some Zealots, and a Battle Probe. Yeah, Battle Probe, get it, to deal with these Zerglings. Buying some time to get the rest of these units forward. So the Zerglings not able to get any critical infrastructure taken care of. It looks like the Overlord's going to be able to flood out as well. The Zerglings trying to clear this bottom right, but they don't have an Overlord with them. So instead, they're eating Dark Templar Blades. Dreamer desperately trying to grab his mineral only. His main, his natural expansion completely mined out. He's only running on that 12 o'clock base. And hopefully this mineral only, once it establishes... In the meantime, Lenny is basically down to two bases himself. That mineral only has been mined out. His 6 o'clock base is operational. He needs to think about expanding himself. It looks like an overlord. This Dark Templar is still here. Three drones do not beat a Dark Templar. Looks like they're going to distance mine for the moment. So becoming an, an interesting elimination match here in this mid-game. Dreamer does have level 3 weapons, level 3 armor. However, level with those three evolution chambers, Lenny is rapidly picked up. The pace in his upgrades. Level 3 Spines, level 2 Carapace. Still, tr He's actually trying to take the 9 o'clock base himself. The Dark Templar with 8 kills. Obliterating everything in that bottom right. So both players having trouble finding bases and dealing with one another's uh, general generalized attacks. It looks like Lenny sending in a bunch of Zerglings, some, some Lurkers as well. Still no Overlord to deal with that Dark Templar. A lot of Storm. Great Storm! On those Hydralisks, obliterating them and clearing out a lot of this army. And these storms might be the difference in this engagement for Dreamer. However, the rest of this army might get pinned in. Some Lurkers repositioning. There is an Observer there. 
Looks like some of those units getting a little bit too frisky and trying to move up that mineral only and getting obliterated. Is there enough size? No. It's going to say, is there enough size storm? There might be enough size storm to clear some of these lurkers out. The Archon's pressing forward and engaging. This is kind of like the last stand sort of action. Lurker is actually pressing in, going to clear out what's left, trying to rescue the rest of those attack forces, but... And actually able to clear out a handful of lurkers, but not able to get the Archons, the High Templar, and everything else out. Lenny needs to start worrying about trading efficiency right now because he has no he's still sitting at two bases effectively that puts him behind as soon as dreamer gets that operational and these dark templar have been absolute heroes for dreamer another drone looks like running around and an overlord trying to press in this is almost yakety sacks with dark templar and still getting kills 17 kills finally the lurker looks like it's going to be able to deal with that army this is a very aggressive base for lenny to take as well so that uh, being that it is essentially sitting right outside Dreamer's side of the map and that mineral only. The Zealots pressing forward, thinking twice, repositioning. Now they're going to engage. Great side storm on those Hydralisks on that back wall. And it looks like, yeah, this hatchery should be canceled. I'm shocked that Lenny's even going for this, to be honest. Playing very, very aggressively. Archons and Zealots melting forward some beautiful storms from Dreamer. And he's getting the better trades. And if it comes into a starvation match, Lenny is going to end up losing this simply because he's just not getting favorable trades here. And what I'm going to call, I guess this is late game at this stage, the Hydra is pouring in, trying to protect that hatchery, not able to do so. The Archons eating a lot of that fire. More drones. Are you kidding me? Lenny continuing. I think this must just be a miss rally, but the drones continue to pour in. He really wants this base. The Hydra is exposed, picking off that Archon. Nice size storms. More size storms. Picks off the Observer as well. So it's going to be one Archon trying to morph in. The, the drones repositioning. There are reinforcements pouring down for Dreamer. And this is going to be a critical Lenny saying, this is the base I'm going to take. Rather than bothering with the bottom right, the 3 o'clock, uh, or the upright base. Maybe because of these Dark Templar uh, patrolling. And this Zealot patrolling is like, nope, I'm just going to make my offense my defense. Observer, nice pick off of the Observer overhead. However, enough size storm to take the lurkers on the low ground, and Dreamer once again having to regroup, back off, and consider his options. And it looks like he wants to go ahead and grab this mineral, this inside mineral only, in the upper right-hand corner of the map. Lenny is starting to wow, morphing a lot of lurkers, <clears throat> and he's just going to make a lurker minefield. Is that okay to say, or is that offensive to Terran? I'm not sure. Zealots eating some damage. Another great size storm. Zealots eating the letter end of it. Are these lurkers going to burrow in time? But wow, the bunched up lurkers getting obliterated under two size storms. And that was a huge amount of gas for Lenny to lose. Dreamer size storms have really been carrying him in this late game. Absolutely beautiful. Morphing in some Archons midfield while Lenny is somewhat distracted. A bunch of drones grouped up. I don't know if this is enough lurkers to defend this anymore. It's okay, I'm allowed to tell offensive Terran jokes. I'm technically Terran, right? Is that the way it goes? I don't know. I hate it when people say stuff like that. <laughs> uh, all right, <laughs> proceeding. Archon moving forward. Hydralisks in position. Drones pressing through. They're getting obliterated along the way. Nice protection of the Observer. Some good size storms. And once again, Lenny. So he has this base up, but I do not think he can hold it. Lenny get a GG right there because he is just, yeah... Dreamer too powerful, getting too much of an economy, and Lenny realizing he was going to end up losing that 9 o'clock base and didn't have additional uh, economic options. Look for Dreamer's, first of all, his Russian casts. If you happen to speak Russian, you're like, oh man, why do I have to listen to this English guy who's not an amazing Protoss uh, high-level BSL player? Well, lucky for you, you got Dreamer out there who is an amazing Protoss player and has threatened to win Hasu League multiple times and probably been on the verge... I would not be shocked if he was on the verge of Gosu League uh, many, many times. He is going to be casting BSL Season 13 in Russian. Look for his participation as well. Hope you guys enjoyed the commentary. Thanks for listening.